The water can be crystal clear, odorless, and even seemingly perfect, but it can still be deadly to fish. This happens because before any life can enter the aquarium, the system must go through an essential phase called biological cycling. Without it, the environment is toxic, unstable, and fatal, even if everything appears clean. Ignoring this process is one of the most common mistakes among beginners, and also the most frustrating. After all, no one wants to see a fish die a few days after purchasing it without understanding why. In this video, you'll learn the seven steps to cycling your aquarium the right way, safely, efficiently, and without guesswork. These are practical guidelines based on what actually works, so you can set up a beautiful and sustainable aquarium where your fish can thrive for many years. If you're setting up your first aquarium or want to make sure you've done everything correctly, stick with me until the end. A simple detail can be the difference between success and frustration. 1. Understand what cycling is and why it saves lives. Cycling is the first step in transforming a container of water into a living, functioning environment. It involves forming a colony of beneficial bacteria that will decompose the organic waste produced by the fish. These bacteria perform vital work. They transform ammonia, extremely toxic, into nitrite and then into nitrate, which is much less harmful. Without them, the water, no matter how crystal clear it may seem, becomes a toxic environment within a few days. It's like fish living in a room filled with invisible gas. Therefore, cycling is comparable to preparing soil before planting. Without this biological soil, nothing survives in the aquarium. This process takes time. On average, it takes 21 to 30 days for the bacteria to establish themselves. During this period, the aquarium is set up with all the equipment connected, but still no fish. It may seem time-consuming, but this initial care prevents losses, stress, and frustration down the road. Respecting cycling ensures that your fish have a long and healthy life from the first dive. 2. Install all equipment and connect everything from the start. Before starting the cycle, the aquarium must be fully assembled with substrate, filter, heater, thermometer, and decorations. Yes, everything already in place. The reason is simple. Nitrifying bacteria settle on all surfaces of the aquarium, not just the filter. If you assemble it piecemeal, you can hinder colony formation. The biological filter is the heart of the cycle. It will house most of the beneficial bacteria, so choose a model compatible with the size of the aquarium and with good biological media. The heater should maintain the water temperature between 75 degrees Fahrenheit and 80 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the ideal range for bacteria multiplication. Turn on the filter and heater as soon as you fill the aquarium with treated, dechlorinated water. Leave everything running 24 hours a day throughout the cycle. This temperature and circulation stability is essential for the process to run properly. Also, remember to add water conditioner to remove chlorine, which kills bacteria. Without this, cycling doesn't even start. 3. Add an ammonia source, fishless but lively. For beneficial bacteria to thrive, you need to provide ammonia, which is their food. Without ammonia, the colony won't develop and the water remains sterile. The safest and most ethical way to do this is through fishless cycling, that is, without putting any animals at risk. There are several ways to add ammonia to the aquarium. Pure pharmacy ammonia, unscented, just a few drops per day, monitored with tests. Fish food, add a small amount and let it decompose. Raw shrimp, a small piece will start releasing ammonia after a few hours. The goal is to reach ammonia levels of 2 to 4 ppm and then observe the natural drop in the test results. This indicates that the bacteria are doing their job. Avoid overdoing it. Too much ammonia at once can slow the cycle or even kill developing bacteria. Keep the tank heated between 75 degrees Fahrenheit and 80 degrees Fahrenheit and monitor everything with ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate tests.
This step can take 5 to 10 days. When ammonia starts to drop and nitrite appears, the cycle is progressing correctly. 4. Monitor parameters. Track water chemistry. With ammonia already present and the filter running, the next step is to monitor the chemical changes in the water. To do this, you'll need a reliable water test kit. Liquid kits are more accurate than strips. During cycling, you should test ammonia, NH3, NH4+, nitrite, NO2 negative, and nitrate, NO3 negative. The expected sequence is as follows. Ammonia rises 2 to 4 ppm. After a few days, nitrite appears, a sign that the first nitrifying bacteria have taken hold. Finally, nitrate begins to rise while ammonia and nitrite drop to zero. These changes can take two to four weeks depending on the temperature, filter type, and amount of ammonia supplied. The ideal temperature remains between 75 degrees Fahrenheit and 80 degrees Fahrenheit to keep the bacteria active. Does the water still look clean? Great, but don't trust your eyes alone. Only tests reveal what's really going on. Continue testing the water every two or three days to monitor the progress. You'll know the cycle is complete when ammonia and nitrite levels are zero and nitrate is present. 5. Perform a partial water change. Prepare the final environment for the fish. After weeks of monitoring the tests, ammoniac nitrite levels reach 0 ppm and nitrate levels are already above 20 or 30 ppm. This indicates that the nitrogen cycle is complete. The bacteria are now capable of transforming toxic waste into less harmful compounds. But before adding the fish, a partial water change, or PWC, is necessary. The goal here is to reduce excess nitrates accumulated during the cycle. Perform a 30% to 50% water change using treated water, dechlorinated, and at the same temperature as the aquarium, between 75 degrees Fahrenheit and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. This change also helps stabilize the pH and other parameters that may have changed over the weeks. If desired, you can superficially clean the glass or substrate, but do not wash the filter or touch the biological media. They are the bacteria's home. After the water change, test the parameters again. Ammonia and nitrite should remain at zero, and nitrate can drop to between 10 and 20 ppm. Now the aquarium is almost ready to welcome its first residents. Six. Add fish slowly, one at a time. Cycling complete? Stable parameters? The most anticipated moment has arrived, adding the fish to the aquarium. But be careful. Even if everything is in order, it's essential to introduce the animals slowly and gradually. Start with one or two small fish, especially if the aquarium is new. This avoids overloading the biological system right away. Even with the bacteria colony established, it is still adapting and needs time to adjust to the presence of the fish and the new rate of waste production. Before adding the fish, perform the thermal and chemical acclimation process. Float the closed bag in the aquarium for about 20 to 30 minutes to equalize the temperature. Remember, between 75 and 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Then gradually add aquarium water to the bag so the fish can get used to the new environment. Wait about a week between introducing one fish and another, always monitoring ammonia and nitrite levels during this period. If the tests remain at zero, you can add one or two more. It's a slow process, but it ensures the health of your fish and the stability of your aquarium. 7. Maintain stability. The cycle continues even after cycling. Once cycling is complete and the first fish are swimming in the aquarium, it's easy to think the work is done. But the truth is, the nitrogen cycle never stops. It's continuous. Every day, fish produce waste, and bacteria continue working to keep the water safe. Therefore, 
the final step is to maintain system stability. Perform weekly ammonia, nitrite, and nitrate tests. Perform regular water changes, 20 to 30% of the water per week, always with dechlorinated water in the correct temperature range, 75 degrees Fahrenheit to 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Never wash the filter with tap water, as chlorine kills bacteria. Always use the aquarium's own water. Feed the fish sparingly to avoid excess waste. Monitor fish behavior. Apathy, irregular swimming, or loss of appetite can indicate water quality problems. With these simple precautions, you can keep your aquarium's biology balanced and provide a healthy environment for your fish for many years to come. Cycling your aquarium is more than a technical step. It's a commitment to the life you're about to bring into it. When you respect this process, you're ensuring not only the survival of your fish, but also the balance of a complete ecosystem within your home. Many people skip cycling out of anxiety or misinformation and then end up facing problems that could have been avoided with patience and knowledge. Now that you know the seven steps to cycling your aquarium the right way, you're prepared to create a stable, healthy, and beautiful environment without having to rush into emergency solutions later. Remember, keeping an aquarium is a journey, and it all starts with a successful cycle. If this video helped you better understand the cycling process, like it and share it with anyone else who's just starting out in the aquarium hobby. And now I want to know, have you ever cycled an aquarium? How long did it take? Did you encounter any difficulties? Tell me in the comments. Your experience might help others. And if you want to continue learning more about fish, aquarium setup, and care, subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. Every week, there's new content for those who love conscious aquarium keeping.